A very good morning. Today is 14 July 2020. In this video, we'll be discussing some of the articles which were published in the Hindu editorial page. The first article is regarding the politics of neopotism, that is, the, regarding the Sushant Sharma death and the politics of neopotism in Bollywood and some of the stats given by the author. The second article is on enabling people to govern themselves, that is, with the pandemic situation uh, showing up the flaws by the governance. Uh, the better way is for the way to humanity to face new challenges. And the third article is on gains from brains as uh, Indian Meteorological Department have uh, reported that a study and well spread monsoon spells good news for the farmers and the economy. And the final article we'll be discussing uh, regarding the Yet another challenge to the Dalit movement, this is the language of mobilization and needs to change in the leadership crisis. I welcome you all to Wi-Fi Study Karo, I am Prashant. Uh, this is a cartoon of the day, this exactly depicts that the a situation in the Rajasthan political criteria between the Ashok Gehlet and Sachin Poilet. Uh, this is the present scenario of the politics as it is led by the Congress government. We can see that the person who is uh, leading from the front is Sonia Gandhi. This is the first article, it is on the Neopotism. In the recent weeks, Neopotism has become center stage in the mainstream public discourse, triggered by the speculations over the death of actor Sushant Singh, uh, Singh Rajput. The debate was initially confined to the film industry, but it has since spread uh, to other domains. What began as a hashtag about the tragic death has acquired a life of its own. How do we understand this sudden upsurge given that the neopotism is not a new phenomenon? In India, whichever field one may consider that there is no denying the prevalence of the influential families that wield neopotic influence, but does this mean we make a peace with neopotism? Certainly not. But a lot of depends. But a lot depends on how the debate is framed and the nature of contingent politics around the neopotism discourse. But the current debate is what is now described as neopotism is how things were traditionally done. In the pre-modern societies, the realms of domesticity and the work were merged with the family playing a central role in determining an individual's entry not only into the occupation but also into the public sphere. In insufficiently modernized societies such as India, the tendency remains strong. Secondly, the tradition social norms still dictate that the family comes first, caste and clan second and everything else including the merit, the last. In India, where the upper caste dominance across the domains is well documented, that is, neopotism extends beyond the families and operates along the axis of caste as well. Deep historical inequalities and dwindling welfare states have made India one of the most unequal societies in the world, that is, with the richest of 1% holding more than 4 times the wealth and the bottom of 70%. Thanks to the reason, therefore, that the anyone concerned about the neopotism would want to attack the cause of which neopotism is a symptom. A symptom the reproduction of inequality after all the more equal or unequal a society the greater the scope and incentive for neopotism in the hypothetical society of a perfect socio-economic equalities each individual's neopotism reserves would cancel out that the of uh, everyone else so tackling neopotism calls for political mobilization against socio-economic inequality the most effective means for reduction such inequality are social justice measures such as affirmative actions, universal access to public health and education and redistribute the policies such as inheritance tax. But the theme of inequality is absent in the neopotism discourse. It is preferred binary not privileged versus non-privileged but the outsider versus insider with all the outrage reversed for the insiders. The idea is not to call for a level playing field but to stroke or the stroke a call the outsider's desire to displace the insider and as a new insider without dismantling the insider outsider structure such as. The key of understanding the neopotism discourse lies in the parallels 
uh, it shades of Anna Hazare led anti corruption movement. First, beneath the hood of moral righteousness, the neo Buddhism discourse is also powered by right wing majoritarian elements. As we, in the case as an anti corruption movement, this aspect remains understated if not hidden, thereby enabling the discourse to get traction across the political spectrum, including the form of liberals. Secondly, the neopotism discourse is a right wing populist in precisely the same way that the anti corruption movement was, with both having the same objective to consolidate the base of Hinduta politics by the challenging public resentment against the traditional elites. In politics, where the old elite symbolically and literally called Nehru Gandhi family and its allies, the strategy would brilliantly give an illusion of authentic change while one faction of upper caste elites displaced another uh, to become the ruling elite. The counters of this fact factional war are clear on the Bollywood context. Since 2013, several notables are the periphery of Bollywood power. A structure have taken the ally with the majoritarian politics, but six years down the line, their strategic alliance with the new power allied in Delhi is yet to yield a meaningful change in the status. For example, their own industry's power centers, which continue to be the same old families. As these families continue to monopolize lucrative opportunities for those who decline to challenge the supremacy, life would get tough for anyone who had fallen out of favor. Understandably, there is a genuine cause for resentment here also since many of these ambitious outsiders to the Bollywood themselves come to the bubbles of privileges and in terms of their class and caste origin, uh, they are also not easily silenced unlike say that Adivasis or Dalit summarily displaced uh, from their home in the rural hinterland. In the society where the federal sense of entitlement uh, simmers between a winner of economic mod modernity, aspirational upper caste, and bolted up resentments are the legion of every domain. From same old uh, toolkit, corruption did not peak in 2011 when the movement began but a media supported public campaign made it seem like it had been helping foment resentment against the UPA regime but because of synonyms of the venal ally that owed everything to the neo putism influence of Nehru Gandhi's. Corruption did not disappear after 2014 but anti-corruption mobilization had done its job as a torsion horse that enabled uh, the forces of Hindu majoritarian and the capture of the power. The increasing sophistication of right-wing propaganda and its layered execution through social media campaign has meant that it rarely registered early enough on a liberal radius. neo putism is the latest in instrument from the right-wing populist toolkit. As an ideological weapon, it is a missile with a multiple warheads. At one level, it does not. It does what populism also does. Pure rage against an allied in the name of the people. At another level, Hindu the forces are using it as achieve three objectives: consolidate their upper caste based by appearing to emphasize. Uh, with their frustrations, translate status anxieties into resentments against sections of elite that are yet to be make a break in Nehruian consensus and embrace Hinduta, and financially communicate and sections of liberal Nehruian elite the same message that goes uh, to some MLAs whenever a non BJP government needs stopping, switch sides, or the face and consequences. Commenting new social uh, antagonism along the axis of the people, outsider versus the allied or insider, uh, is the proven political strategy of right wing authoritarian populist. The neo putism rhetoric is similar operation where the resentments and the frustrations of the less privileged, aspirational upper class and middle class are sought to be weaponized against the order, relatively more privileged upper caste functions now authored as a Nehruian allied. The neo putism discourse then is another. A salvo in the battle between the two allies that is an Aryan ancient regime with the pluralist instincts and the brash new aspirational faction that want its share uh, of the spoil of the power. This share it feels allied to the basis of the political containment or commitment to Hinduta but given the heavy competition and the small size of the pie, a great many feel deprived and resentful as they see the old liberal elites continuing in their privileged purchase as always they be. 
It may it remains as seen with a deep, deepening of social antagonism through popularizing rhetoric offers enough fuel for the propaganda campaign capable for insulting the ruling party from the political cause of governance failure and economic headwise. This is regarding the politics of uh, neopotism. The discourse of Salvo is a battle between two elites. The next article is regarding uh, the Dalit movement. The language of mobilization needs to change. The pandemic is forcing and us to understand the changing of the nature society in North India, especially or specifically. It has also reshaped the discourse of marginalization. Dalit issues are the part of discourse, but they are submerged in the broader discussion in economic vulnerabilities highlighted by COVID-19. This pandemic had also brought about uh, two important shifts in the political discourse on the marginalized. As the lockdown caused unfold suffering to the poor migrant laborers, it has also brought them for the margins of the center of deliberations. Second, discussions on the space of marginalized and public health system and the safety are in the focus. However, the concerns of Dalit remain hidden under the border categories of the poor, vulnerable and marginal etc. Now, changing the vocabulary in contemporary debates, there is a reappearance of the class-based vocabulary. Caste-based issues have been either become invisible or only visible as a part of wider discourse. Leaders such as uh, Bahujan Samajwadi Party Supremo, Mayawati and Bhim Army Chief Chandrasekhar have not been able to engage effectively with these new shifts. They have not been able to carve out the location of these new debates for their own politics. Now they have uh, to reorient their exclusively caste-based language and reshape their political discourse to be in tune with the times. There are large number of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes among the migrant laborers, but Dalit leaders in North India have not been able to represent their concerns. The dilemma is how to address their constituencies using the class terminology such as laborer and the poor even as a majority of migrant poor as Dalit and OBCs. The dilemma has also made uh, Dalit leaders non-assertive. It is possible uh, that these shifts at political debate may continue in the post-pandemic uh, phase for at least a few years as the vulnerabilities of marginalized will increase. The Dalit movement in the North India is inhabited in using caste-based binaries in its mobilization language but had failed uh, to respond to the changing political dict diction. In fact, the leaders have not changed their political diction uh, for 30 years since the time of uh, Kanshi Ram led by Bahujan movement. The movement is facing the crisis of agendas and also social programs. The constant repetition of unfulfilled claims and commitments and slogans and promises create disillusionment among the sections of their support base. Another issue is that the Dalit movement in North India is grappling with a leadership crisis uh, during the Bahujan Samajwadi Party Bahujan movement in 1990, uh, the idea was that the movement was the party could facilitate each other but the BSP which emerged uh, as a Bahujan social movement developed gradually as a party structure like a pyramid. Under the influences of Ambedkarite ideology and Dalit Bahujan movements, an assertive and politically aware Dalit consci uh, consciousness consciousness was being formed among the section of Dalit groups. This is regarding the language of mobilization needs to be changed because the pandemic forcing uh, to understand the changing of nature, the politi politicians should also change the strategy and there is a huge leadership crisis regarding this. The next article is on enabling people uh, to govern themselves. Govern guns Governance system at all levels, that is global, national, and local, have experienced the stress and fallout of COVID-19 pandemic. Architectural flaws have also revealed in their design breakdowns in many subsystems have also managed. At the same time, in healthcare, logistics, business, finance, and administration, the complexity of handling so many subsystems at the same time have overwhelmed government governance. Now, solutions for one subsystem backfired another subsystem. For example, the lockdown to make it easier to manage the health crisis have made it harder to manage economic distress simultaneously. In fact, the diversion of resources to focus on the threat of life posed by COVID-19 has increased vulnerabilities to the death 
a form of other diseases and even for a malnutrition in many parts of India. A mismatch in the event. Human civilization advances the evolution of better institutions to manage public affairs. Institutions of parliamentary doc democracy, for example, are limited a liability business corporation did not exist of uh, 400 years ago institutions of global governance such as united nations and world trade organization did, did not exist even 100 years ago these institutions were invented to enable human societies to produce a better outcomes for the citizens they have also put uh, the severe stress uh, test now by the global health and economic crisis this test have revealed the fundamental flaw uh, in the design there is a mismatch in the design of governance institutions at the global level and also in India with the challenges that they require to manage. Design like the machines for efficiency, they are trying to fit themselves into uh, an organic system of natural environment coupled with the human society. It seems that the government institutions are square pegs forcing themselves into round holes. There are interconnected issues. The global challenge listed in 17 Sustainable Development Goals, that is SDGs of United Nations, which humanity uh, must urgently ad address now, are systematic challenges. All these systematic problems are interconnected with each other. Environmental and economic and social issues cannot be separated from each other and solved by experts in soils or by agencies focused only on their problems. A good solution to one is to create more problems for others as government responses to the novel coronavirus pandemic uh, have revealed. Even if the experts in different disciplines could combine their perspectives and the so, uh, soil solutions at the global level, they will not be able to solve systematic problems of SDGs because uh, the solutions must fit the specific condition of each country and each locality within the countries too. To fit and shape the environment and the condition of society, the solution of environmental sustainability along with the sustainable livelihood cannot be the same in Kerala, Ladakh and also some different parts of the country. Solutions must be local, moreover for the local people to support an implementation of solutions, they must believe in solutions is right one for them and not solutions thrust upon them by the outside expert. Therefore, they must be active contributors to the knowledge for and active participants in and the creation of the solutions. Moreover, the knowledge of different experts about the environment and society and economy must come together and to fit reality realities of the ground. A case for the local system is that the governance of the people must not only uh, for the people, it is, um, it is for the people and that Gandhiji had in economic advisors developed the solutions for local enterprises uh, through observations and experiments on the ground and some of the founders says that the resurgence journal that the flaws in the economic theory that were driving publicly policy in capitalistic as well as communist countries he also proposed uh, that a new economic founded as a local enterprise were very consistent within the Gandhiji's ideas when there are scientific explanations of why local system solutions are the best if not the only way to solve complex systematic problems and when Indian constitution requires this, then why does, the, why does not the government devolve power to the citizens of the villages and towns in India for them to govern their own affairs? An Indian anthropologist gave, me, gave an insight. Now, the insight was the officers, that is administrative officers, uh, who seem to have more compassion for the communities than uh, their colleagues had uh, were involved at some time in the career and evolution of the community-based public health system and self-help group movements in some part of the country and they also contrasted the views about how the change is brought about the, in the views of who can implement the Swachh Bharat program recently. The later also very fine officers saw that their role of deliveries of good government whereas the former uh, through the experience had begun to see the role of government is perhaps enable governance uh, the district collector the key of IAS functional functionary in India's governance is the district collector the role of his forebears in the Indian civil services set up by the British were expected to perform uh, which can collect the revenues and maintain law and order when after independence the Indian uh, 
they took up a large welfare rolls had become the district deliverer the government let's see it strengthened the image of the of partner government taking care in the ward in inwards the schemes were managed by the own ministries and departments in the capital with local functional as a department as a points of the contact with citizens the dominant theory in practice of good government is good government by the people of the people and for the people uh, which slips easily into government of the people by the government for the political party in power this has been a a prevalent theory in the most states of india for too long even when the government is for the people as deliverer of services money into the bank accounts and money for the building toilets and is not good enough the government had to support and enable the people to govern themselves to realize the vision of government of the people for for the people and by the people regarding enabling the people to govern by themselves the next article is on the indian meteorological department forecast regarding the monsoon so far india appears to having a good uh, run with the monsoon as the most recent data available from the indian meteorological department rainfall uh, during the season had been 14% more than what it is usually for the period and the month of june uh, only accounts for about 17% of the monsoon rainfall spanning in between june to september It is a month during which the monsoon set and is in the process can sometimes be delayed for a much a week. The June is also when the monsoon begins its journey from two extremities of the country. One branch starts its journey towards northward uh, from Kerala and other wing called the Bay of Bengal branch enters into India and from the southeast. Both branches eventually coverage in the north and usually this emerging and strengthening the monsoon currents uh, in the mainland take at least until july 15th the imd never forecast the possible rainfall like likely during the june because it uh, vagarizes involved on the onset and the pace of journey this year the two significant things happened that is the monsoon set back in the textbook that is dated june 1st uh, this was even after the concerns of cyclone amphon that had uh, ravaged west bengal uh, would delay the monsoon entry too The net result of all this is mainly more rains uh, in the days of June and fairly even distribution across the country. The IMD's record shows that only four days in a month of did not did daily rainfall drop uh, below the historical norms, except in the northwest India, which is starting at three percent deficit. The rainfall in the east, south, and central India had posted a surplus that is to thirteen percent to twenty percent. while good rains in the june signal farmers to prepare soil and sow kharif crop and most important months are july and august these two months account for the two third of the monsoon rain this is also the time for the monsoon goers so called a break condition the prolonged breaks or absence of rain can even lead to drought in spite of significant improvement in data gathering and technological advances meteorological agencies cannot yet reliably forecast the advent of the break or how long it can last what is critical is that normal rains also obscure the possibility of heavy rains or severe droughts in the district or over the larger areas therefore short medium range forecast needs to be strengthened and effectively communicated to the people so regarding the gains from the rains on monsoon performance by indian meteorological department now uh, that's the end of article discussion if you are new to my channel i request you all to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will not miss further updates Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.